Good morning. I'd like to call the uh, regular Tuesday, January 14th meeting of the Airport Authority to order. And uh, before we start on today's uh, agenda items, I'd like to uh, call on Sean. Uh, Allegiant has a, uh, a public announcement this morning, so I'd like to have uh, Sean read the read the announcement. All right. So Allegiant uh, announced uh, the largest service expansion in company history with three new cities and 44 nonstop routes. New destinations for Allegiant are Boston, Chicago, and Houston. That that's the headliners for the major expansion. And Fargo's portion of the expansion is that Allegiant will start. Uh, seasonal nonstop service to Nashville starting June 4th and that'll operate through November 15th so it appears that'll be Thursday Sunday service fares as low as $55 there'll be more information coming out later today but everything is on the Allegiant website and uh, it's a route that uh, we pitched along with Mark Sixlo for about two years to Allegiant and they finally uh, bought into that and we'll uh, give it a try so uh, be some I think the UND hockey fans are a little happy I think the UND is Playing down there October 17th in Nashville, so I'm sure that week the flights will fill up pretty well. So stay tuned for more information on that. I think we'll have a local press release coming out here shortly through Flint. Thank you, Tim. That's great. Great news. Okay. Um, regular minutes uh, were sent out, uh, last uh, meeting's minutes. Any uh, additions or corrections? Anyone? Hearing none, they'll be approved as read. Uh, airport vouchers uh, totaling 150,299 cents. Uh, I have a motion for airport vouchers. Second. I have a second. motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call for roll. Lynn? Aye. Hingen? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Clark? Aye. Calgary? Aye. Uh, individual vouchers. Uh, we have uh, listed A through L. Um, Entertain a motion on those to uh, either uh, all of them or break them out. Anybody has any? We approve all. A through L. A through L. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion at all? Let's see our brooms and floors are in there. Uh, any other comments? If you're in and stop by the shop, you can take a look at all the new equipment. So four new pieces that have arrived in the last month and a half. So yeah, and I, I've done that, and uh, I recommend it. It's uh, <clears throat> pretty awesome equipment, it really is. You can see why we need new facilities to house all of this stuff too. Okay, uh, call for the question. Uh, roll call. Lynn. Aye. Bingham. Aye. Lynn. Yes. Clark. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay, item number four is received communication from Sixel. Sean. Okay, Mark Sixel has been our air service consultant since about 2004. We were one of his first clients. Mark is based in Eugene, Oregon, and um, his contract is up um, at the end of February of this year, and he's requesting a, a contract uh, extension that would be from March 1st of 2020 through February 28th of 2023. Um, you can see in the uh, proposal some of the uh, services that he does provide we do subscribe to his quarterly data that we send out to you um, every month there's all kinds of data that he does send and uh, his success fee is is continues to be uh, on the first day of new service that, that's published in the OAG schedule um, he will receive two dollars per in plane passenger for the new airline or expanded service at Fargo for a period of 24 months from the initiation of service to and from Fargo uh, that's capped at eighty thousand dollars. So that that's how he's paid. So he basically works at no charge until there's success. And, uh, he's done an extremely great job for us, and hopefully you'll allow him to continue in that capacity. And the the data that he provides uh, helps us get announcements like uh, we just had this morning with Alita. Uh, need a is that pretty typical, the way that contract's set up? Is that pretty typical for... This is a little unique. Some airports do a flat fee. Okay. Um, others uh, do on a meeting-by-meeting -meeting basis. So if we go to speed dating conferences with airlines, mm -hmm. or if we do headquarters visits, some airports are just for that visit, provide the data, and, okay. then, and then move on. But this is a little bit unique in that there's no fee until there's success. Success. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so I'd entertain a motion to accept the sexual proposal. So moved. 
Move and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, call for the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Number five, receive update on uh, the DOT Small Community Air Service Grant Extension. So Tell a few days ago, the um, Department of Transportation allowed the second extension of a grant that was awarded to us in 2015. Uh, it's a $500,000 federal grant through the Small Community Air Service Development Program. We partnered in that grant with the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Greater Fargo Board Economic Development Corporation to come up with a local match for that. It's about $325,000 in local uh, dollars that go towards marketing and, and startup fees. So uh, the primary uh, use of that is Seattle service with, with Alaska. And uh, uh, because of the progress that we've made, although it's been slow, pilot shortage and some other things happening, Seattle um, uh, constraints, um, they decided that there's enough interest, I guess if you will, on behalf of that carrier uh, to allow the extension of the grant through this time next year. And uh, we've already been invited out to Seattle to meet with Alaska again and some Microsoft folks. So. That'll be taking place over the next uh, 45 to 60 days. So just that's an update on that. And everything's been returned and signed by the DOT. So the extension is there and the partnerships with uh, the Convention Bureau and the uh, EDC continue. So we'll hope for some success. <coughs> okay, uh, number six, received communication from uh, Joel Nickel on uh, North GA Hangar. Okay, so Joel had contacted me um, a few weeks ago about his interest in constructing a hangar at the airport, and in your package you'll see that um, he wants to, I guess, reserve a spot, if you will, up in the north general aviation area, which is uh, between the um, Mike Kempel hangar and the Cliff Hamilton hangar yeah. in the north general aviation area. I'll find this here for you. Basically, this is Fargo Jet Center, the North General Aviation Area. So this is the Kempel Hangar. This is the Hamilton Hangar. He would like to be adjacent to the Kempel Hangar in this area here with the hangar size. I don't know if he mentioned it in his email to be determined, but 60 by 60 or something of that nature, something very similar in size to the hangars here. Water and sewer is available in this hangar in adjacent area. So he'll be going through the process. We probably will do an environmental review. There'll have to be a wetland delineation study, all of these things that will take place. But his goal is to be under the ground sometime this year he's engaged a couple of contractors and when he gets uh, through his next steps I think he's working with an engineering firm I know Jeff and if he's reached out to you yet he has reached out to me, so. so he's starting the process to, to look at that he may be looking for some partners as well there's there's no additional taxiway required or there just join not for what he is proposing so. Okay. so he'd be responsible for the like Mike Kempel was here, this concrete that's in front of the hangar, he would yeah. be responsible for that concrete as well uh, that ties into the taxi line that's out there. Um, so another good addition to, to the North GA. We'll keep you apprised as uh, we hear more information. But uh, he just wants that spot kind of reserved for him. I don't think anybody else is going to come forward in the next few weeks, but if they do, I guess that's his spot for now. Thank you. Um, and uh, continue on to the east side terminal. Okay, so Mr. Flaxworth is here as well. So Vox Telesis, as we have read, has, has outgrown their space in the east terminal. And their plans are to move to a new location over on Broadway in 25th Avenue North. Does that Correct. sound right? And when Vox Telesis moved into the second floor space, they you know did some significant fit up to that space. And maybe Rick can help me recall all that, that, that they had done there, but um, they'd like to terminate the lease with no penalty when our, the new building is ready uh, for them to move into. Um, we believe there's other parties interested in the space. Uh, Rick should be able to fill that fairly well, so I have, I'm fine with that as long as there's not a real long lead time with someone else moving in there, but they have requested uh, the airport authority reimburse them for five thousand in the amount of five thousand dollars for a portion of the remodeling costs uh, that they incurred to improve the space that they occupy. Um, I don't know, it, it, everything's being left there, so I don't really have a problem with that, but I guess I'd look to your advice, or Rick, if you have any advice for us on that. I mean, uh, obviously the space has uh, drastically been improved since uh, they did the remodeling. Uh, 
they probably did uh, above and beyond what uh, you would normally see. Uh, that space did have a kitchenette in it. Uh, they put granite countertops uh, in there. New lighting. Uh, they tore out some walls, opened the space up. Uh, it's very, very nice. I don't know how many of you have ever been in there, but uh, they they did a nice job. So, and and Sean's right. Uh, the improvements that they did are staying behind. So, uh, the airport authority gets to keep everything that they uh, did there. So they're just looking to recoup some of their original inputs that they had uh, from the original lease agreement with you guys. It's not anything specialty that uh, nobody else can use, right? No, no, it's it's all uh, actually probably in better shape uh, layout-wise uh, for another tenant. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We we should benefit from, from the recouping or helping them recoup. Uh, so is uh, five thousand dollars is is what they're uh, asking Correct. for. So. Need a motion to entertain that, Mr. Chairman. Before a motion, are we setting any precedent by the um, uh, the action of giving them money back on the end of the lease for fit up? Uh, I don't remember I don't uh, so. of any past ones. I don't know that. Rick, do you know, have, have we done that in the past where the tenant moved out earlier? I, uh, I don't recall any. I, I don't know of, I don't know that we've had uh, we've had tenants who have uh, put in the expense in the past they kind of that was my next question yeah. that is the quality of the improvement such that we benefit obviously it is so yeah yeah I think the only other tenant I can think of that's a major improvement Sean uh, you can uh, add in on this but I'd say Sanford uh, when they were down on the main floor on that yeah. south end that was probably the only other tenant that I can think of that did a major improvement on the space. Yeah, Spectrum did as well. Spectrum put oh, in uh, probably $100,000, $150,000 of improvements. Yeah. Yeah. And they're still there. So. so it's an early termination, too? Yeah, I forget yeah. the exact term of their, their lease, but I think Rick will have somebody in there fairly soon. So. Okay. Yeah. Rick, do you know how, how early they are, uh, how long was the lease and how uh, early they're leaving? I believe they have about two years left on the lease, maybe a year and a half, roughly, and then um, they're looking possibly March 31, move out date. So the space would become available April 1. And, and we have a lot of inquiries for these terminals, so I don't see this uh, as being empty for very long. Uh, still entertain a motion if anybody cares to. So moved. Okay, have a motion and second. Second. Motion and second. Any mother, other discussion? I guess I would ask that uh, or consider that if it's not rented within three months, you know, if they rent it within three months, if you would amend it, uh, then do the reimbursement. If not, and hold the money. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't let a, in my uh, rentals. I wouldn't let somebody terminate the lease and then ask for money back too. So yeah, early terminations. Anyway, would you uh, would you amend that? Yep. Okay. Friendly amendment so to the three months, and if it's not rented in three months, then um, we would not give the reimbursement. Yep. Okay. So I will uh, ask for a vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We no. didn't have a second to the amendment. Oh. Yes. I'll second the amendment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now on the motion and as amended, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. All right, uh, next is uh, uh, Altec, another east side terminal. Yeah, this is uh, some second floor space. It's about 196 square feet on the on the north end of there, and they've asked for a one-year extension to their lease as well. 
at the 3% escalator will be in there. And Stacy will get that put together. It takes about five minutes to update the existing lease change from dates and then some of them. <coughs> okay. Anything else, Rick, on them? No, this has been pretty standard in uh, three standard 3% three increase, which we've done on every lease. Yeah. So. Okay, I would uh, ask for a motion to extend their lease. Motion. Second. And motion and a second. Uh, any additional discussion? Hearing none, call for the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, item number nine is a request for the North Dakota Aviation Council for the Midwest Aviation Symposium uh, to sponsor that up in uh, Minot this year, March 1st through the 5th. We have done this in the past, uh, been a sponsor. Uh, I don't know how many of, of the board has gone or uh, uh, those in the room have gone, but it's a, uh, it's a very good statewide symposium. So uh, I think in the past, Sean, have we done a Five thousand dollars today. Well, when it's in Fargo, we we do five thousand. When it's outside of Fargo, we do. I was going to look this up before we left, but it's something less. Is it the two thousand? Either one or two. I it's either a thousand or two thousand. Whatever okay. we've done in the past, that's what we're going to do. But it won't be more than two thousand um, dollars. I forgot to look that up before I came to the meeting, but it'll be one of those two amounts. Mm. Okay. Entertain a motion if anybody wants to. Uh, I move boom. that we um, be a sponsor for the Upper Midwest Aviation Symposium, March 1st through 5th, 2020, Minot, for an amount not to exceed $2,000. A second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Can anybody go to this? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, Jordan will be going. Jordan's on oh, the council. Yeah. Good. He's on the Airport Association. And board, I, so. I'm, I'm seeing one audience member that'll probably go, Darren Hall. Mm -hmm. and, so. Darren, you're chair of the North Dakota Aviation uh, Council. <laughs> so he's, he's so, in charge of this. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. Good. I think the past one's about 2000 if it wasn't in Fargo. Okay. Okay. Um, we have motion, second. Any other discussion? We'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carried. Okay, uh, next is to authorize attendance at some other uh, conferences coming up. So uh, if, if you look at the list, there are some that are in conflict here. That's the, uh, the Minot Conference as well as a, uh, an Industrial Aviation and Military Operations Workshop down in Colorado Springs. Uh, the, the one in Colorado Springs, uh, I think, I would like to attend. It is a uh, Colorado Springs Airport has Air Force Reserve, active duty Air Force, and military, as well as civilian field. So it's very similar to our field. I think it would be a it would be good to uh, hear the latest on uh, lease and uh, other items that they plan on, on doing. So I would like to attend that one. The uh, the authorization for the other ones, uh, Sean, you want to cover the ARFF? And yeah, the 2020 ARF Leadership Conference will be attended by Chief Bush, correct? He'll, he'll be attending that, which works. Great Lakes Chapter, Triple E Winter Board Meeting in Dubuque. Some president of the chapter will, will be attending that. And then the Triple E Chapter Officer Meetings and uh, Legislative Conference in D.C. Uh, uh, March 3rd through the 6th, I'll be attending that as well. Uh, as president of the Great Lakes Chapter. And the Upper Midwest Aviation Symposium, at least Jordan, maybe maybe Darren, I'm not sure, will be attending that. The uh, the legislative conference, I know, Sean, you've gone to that mm -hmm. every year. Uh, that is a uh, th that's a, a good one as well. Um, they're they're all unfortunately they overlap or exactly on top of each other, but uh, I I think we should authorize attendance at all of them, whether we can get somebody to attend. So I'd entertain a motion for authorization. So moved. Second. Okay. Move and a second. Any other uh, discussion? Hearing none, call for the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed, same sign. Authorization motion carries. Okay, uh, airport construction security update. Uh, John, turn to Terry and Jeff for any Wait, updates. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just got comments back on Friday for the eligibility report for the SRE building, and just have not had time to go through that. Um, so I'll do those in the coming days here and get um, um, back coordinated with the FAA. The other two things I'd like to mention uh, one is a PFC application. Um, I've been working with the airports to put together another PFC application number nine. Um, submitted the draft application to the FAA back in December of 2018. Um, we just got comments back about uh, three, four weeks ago, and on the co over the uh, course of those three, four weeks, I've been working to uh, provide the information that the FAA has wanted, and I've resubmitted that uh, to them now. Uh, so it's back in their hands. The two big sticking points are uh, one is the airport authority um, purchased a motor grader, and the AIP handbook specifically excludes motor graders from eligibility. Don't know why it just does. However, the issue is the airport uses it to remove snow, remove ice on the airport runway. So that project has um, been elevated up back up the chain for a special approval. And then the other project is the uh, project Terry was working on with the airport authority to replace the exterior metal panels on the east side of the terminal. There's some issue whether it's maintenance or um, fact that the panel is just a <coughs> useful letter. So that project's been elevated in the chain. Um, obviously the big project uh, that we're working on right now is, is UPS. And our goal is to have our 90% uh, submittal to the FAA at the end of this month or early February. And then UPS is coming to Fargo on the 4th of February to meet with us and their architect and airport just to uh, coordinate both projects because um, obviously the airport has the, the apron and taxiway and access road street lightings and then UPS has their parking lots buildings um, all of their infrastructure so there's just inherently going to be a lot of um, coordination that needs to take place to piece the two projects together. And there's a hangar project that's going on simultaneously as well right. with the uh, UPS feeders and they, they've been in contact with myself a little bit with Jeff and some developers on uh, the possibility of building a hangar for one of the UPS feeders here as well. So this will be a lot of in activity. In addition to the sort of Correct. Yeah. Be a maintenance hangar. Greg Erickson from UPS tells me that their goal to move into the new facility is the fall of 2021. And with, which I think is a good thing from the standpoint, from a construction standpoint, just because of the sheer magnitude of the size of the project, we're going to have two construction seasons to get the work accomplished before they move in. So, if you can imagine, it's just a big project to begin with, but then you have, you know, two different projects going on and in a relatively small area. So, and hopefully we get done sooner. And it's <coughs> In the fall of 2021. Fall of 2021. Couldn't they do it by July 21st when the air show is over? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good call. Yeah. Hoping it's going to be earlier, but once they get started, but yeah. we don't know. <laughs> Tenants on the South GA will be very excited to have yeah. uh, all of that traffic out of there. Yeah, we will be too. It's a lot of congestion down there. There is. And there's construction plan for down there as well, eventually. Okay, thank you. Talk about any of that? Um, stats? No. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so Darren compiled the stats. He's the statistician. So 2019 was another record year. Uh, we surpassed our 2014 record uh, that was held for total passenger employments of 471,333 uh, in plain passengers in addition we had an additional 7,560 charter passengers those are going to Laughlin Wendover football charters private charters military charters and others so it was a big year from there it's an 11.6 percent increase over 2018 uh, total passengers 
for the year, um, less the charter passengers, about 930,409 people, which is up 11.4% uh, from 2018. 7,390 year carrier landings in 2019. As far as cargo, uh, another record year. We finished out the, the year really strong in 2019. 6,203 air cargo aircraft landed with a total landed weight of 391 million 40,095 pounds. Now, that has nothing to do with anything that's on board the aircraft. The FAA has us track cargo landings and weights reports by landed weight of the aircraft. So the aircraft can land here with about one ounce of freight on board. We have no idea how much freight is on board each aircraft. It's the landed weight of cargo aircraft. That's how we track it. That's how the feds track it. Uh, the amount of cargo on board is proprietary. We'll never know that. So, but um, that's uh, up. So the 6,203 air cargo aircraft landed uh, was up from 4,607 in 2018. Uh, where we had 275 million 305,359 pounds, so it's a 42 percent increase year over year. Now, granted, we're going to start to level off this year because we have the full impact now of UPS year over year versus just FedEx prior. So, we'll see where that goes. But um, it was it was a busy year. Hope it continues. Um, I think Darren, how many seats do we have scheduled now coming up in March? Is it? That's over 60. 60,000 seats. So if we fill what we normally do, uh, we'll probably be well over 50,000 passengers in March. So well, this yeah. month we had uh, the busiest days. We had 2,032 seats, uh, I think, on the highest days. Leaving well, December was our busiest month ever. Leaving yeah. month. We've never had that happen December 4th. It's either been like March or July. Yeah. So it's yeah. like 46,021 passengers for, uh, that's revenue passengers now. There's a whole bunch of non-rev passengers that are out there flying on frequent flyer miles or they're, they're family members of, of airline crews and stuff. So there's significantly more than what the numbers uh, indicate, but we can only count in plain revenue passengers. So um, so we got a good chance in March to exceed the 50,000 threshold and, and hopefully we'll do that. And this, this does not count our, our local uh, aviation operations for businesses for uh, part of Jet Center. Uh, they they run a lot of people through there. Does it count the military charters that, are, that we do on the site? Yes, they, when they report those, that's in that 7,560 number, the military. Yep. Yeah, we had a lot of military charters this year. So, so you can see why uh, in our uh, CIP, the plan for the future. We need to expand this terminal because we're growing. Uh, we need more gates, uh, more ramp space, and some newer ramp space. Okay, thanks. Um, I think that's it for security. Anybody TSA here? No. No, good. Okay, uh, we are uh, going to go into uh, an executive session to discuss our MOU with the city. Uh, so we will take a uh, short recess, and before I do that, I will uh, read you the required uh, uh, statement for going into executive session. Then we'll go into a recess, and then we will, uh, re uh, we will uh, reconvene, reconvene in, uh, when we're done with the executive session. So the Municipal Airport Authority of the City of Fargo will meet in executive session to receive a status update as to the mediation by and between the MAA and the City of Fargo as it relates to the relationship between the Airport Authority and the City of <coughs> Fargo for certain services provided to and paid for by the airport. The executive session will review the status of what the parties have discussed and the proposed draft memorandum of understanding. These discussions have financial implications and an open meeting of these discussions, strategy and direction to the chairman or the MAA's attorney would <coughs> create an adverse fiscal effect on the bargaining position of the FAA, of the MAA, sorry. The uh, executive session has been authorized pursuant to North Dakota Century Code 4404-19-9. So, so we, a motion to go to we'll, executive we will session. entertain a motion, motion to go into executive session. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, we will stand in adjournment. Uh, we convene out of uh, executive session and uh, I would uh, entertain a uh, motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I would move that um, we accept the mediated MOU already voted on. Uh -huh.
by the City of Fire and Water Commission, um, with one exception um, to one section of the proposed MOU, for which um, the MOU uh, may need a counter offer, and we would like to do that, uh, make a counter offer to the city. Okay, uh, second to that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I uh, ask for a roll call vote. Sean? Lynn? No. Hingen? Yes. Lynn? No. Clerk? Yes. Hogan? Yes. Okay, that motion passes. Uh, if we are going to counter, I will also need a uh, motion to extend mediation. Motion. Second? second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, call for the vote. Lynn? Aye. Hingen? Aye. Lind? Aye. Clerk? Aye. Hogan? Aye. Okay. Uh, I think uh, that is the entire business, but I, before I adjourn, I would like to just say uh, that we have worked on this not just in the past few weeks, but we started this process two years ago. Almost three now. Yeah, right. Almost coming up on three, actually. So this has been a long, drawn-out process. There's been an awful lot of effort, work, and uh, a little bit of angst in this uh, entire process. But I want to thank those board members who have hung in there. I want to thank especially uh, Virginia and Rick for being on the negotiating team as well, and uh, our attorney for hanging in there with us, and, uh, and also uh, thank Thank the city for uh, proposing a mediator uh, and uh, going through that process. Because it, is, it has been, uh, again, a long process. And we're not quite there, but, uh, you know, they're stringing the tape on the, on the uh, track. So we can hopefully break the tape here soon. Um, and with that, uh, we'll adjourn.